So this week, as every week, there's a giant data leak in the press. This one is unique because it's bigger than ever. 2.7 billion rows. Every row is a name, address, occasionally a mother's maiden name, and almost always a social security number. This thing is so big that you could just look up your friends. I downloaded it's 176.81 gigabytes of <laughs> CSV file. A lot of people are in there multiple times. If you have different addresses, it'll put a new line, which is why there's more than there are Americans in the thing. But basically, if you have a social security number, it's been compromised. It's, at least it's not an important like yeah. thing in our society right now, that number. So it's good. It's not good. an important thing, and it's certainly oh, not a secret. But the thing is, it's useful if you think of all the times when you call a a computer and it asks for your the last four digits of your social security number in order to confirm who you are, like this makes identity fraud really easy. And a lot of times these databases are being like bought and sold and traded on the dark web. This one is just wide open. Everybody's got it now. So social security numbers as an authentication token are totally over for people who care about trying to keep yourself from getting ripped off any worse than necessary. There is a thing you can do, which is call all the credit agencies. There's three big ones and one almost big one that you can call. Probably can't get through to them this week because of this leak, but you can actually go to their websites and you can, well, there's one thing you can do, which is you can block opening new accounts. And so whenever somebody tries to open an account in your name using your credentials, it'll be blocked for like 30 days and give you a chance to intervene. So there's a useful defensive mechanism there, but by and large, you're all screwed. Just letting you know ahead of time. Um, yeah. It was a public service announcement. Of, yeah. I mean, I saw it just said, if you forgot uh, your social security number, text me and I'll send it to you. <laughs> exactly. It's a new service, right? Yeah. You want to just give it to perplexity and then it can just tell you, by the way, perplexity, what is my social security? Yeah, totally. That would be useful. They can't do it yet. Actually, maybe it can. Let's try. You um, probably I, can. I tried to grep this file for you and I didn't find you. Oh, there you go. Let's see. I tried to so, be good. Now, the, now it, you it helps because every few years I just become a different name. So no, it's just yeah. It makes like it, <laughs> just keep changing your name. Exactly. It's like a, a chimera of, of, of digital fugitives. Digital fugitives. It's pretty bad though. Someone said to me, they said, yeah, but Europeans are, you ever seen Europeans operate with their credit card? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like a European with a credit card. I could I've never easily <laughs> ask them. You can't see it. The, that credit card is like full ninja level and they will have the credit card. You could ask them for underwear size and they will show you both the underwear and the label. <laughs> But they won't, but a credit card and you may as well forget about it. And Americans, I'm like, they're like, aren't you afraid of them stealing? I said, I have a lot of forehead space. I could literally have all of my cards listed right here. I don't care. I have no liability. Oh, exactly. Walk around like, just take it. Take it. <laughs> at dinner, I just like sprinkle them on the table for whoever. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think, I think I have a card that's been missing for a while. I still continue to use it. I monitor if there's fake like, any transactions. But I don't have the time to get the new one. I don't have time to get the new one. And it really works well on my Apple wallet. So I'm <laughs> petrified having to revoke it. And for those, since this is public, I'm not letting any of the card companies know which one it is. But it, it's been perfect. Like, it works well. And now I actually have less to carry in my wallet because I've lost it. Yeah. So it's, it's really good. It, but I will say that the thing that we've got to do is come up with better stuff. The Brazilians have something that was well. The Coincidental that you said that because this week Apple announced that they're going to open up the NFC thing for other wallets and stuff. So I think what's going to happen literally this year is everything will go into the, there's what's called a secure element, which used to be called secure enclave on the chip. So it's a way for apps to put secret data with processing into that in the, in the secure element. So it can do the challenge and response and whatever it needs. So you can, all of your stuff 
I mean, credit cards are in Apple Wallet, but that's just because they're a token. But things that go in Apple Wallet will not be accessible to apps, right? So even if you hack into the phone, you won't be able to get all that stuff. So we'll be able to have Bitcoin wallets in there. We'll be able to have, or whatever kind of weird shitcoin wallet you want can be in there. Although Apple is only allowing certain developers to do it. So you have to apply in the Apple developer ecosystem to get access for your app to put stuff in the wallet. But once it's in, then it can use, it'll be able to use NFC. So all of your movie tickets will be NFC. All of your going to the sports ball games tickets will be NFC. Air, airline boarding passes will be NFC. Right now they're not. They're using QR codes and shit, and it's not secure at all. But that'll all get and fixed really soon. What's interesting is, besides the fact that I think that was my patent, which I still have, which someday we should look at, it's QR codes in a wallet, right? Since oh, like yeah. 2005 and 10. I, it's actually two issued patents. Okay. So if you look up membership cards, e loyalty wallet is my, uh, my little thing. Whoever we should talk about that. Maybe we should go back to intellectual ventures. And yeah, I know. Can... The Brazilians were interesting because whenever you'd go and use your card in Brazil, all yeah. Brazilian credit cards and debit, not only were they pin protected, which is okay, I get the pin protecting, and then that's on the chip. It was a random question about random digits in the pin. Whoa. It's cool. And this is like 10 years ago. And I was like, wait, what? I've never so seen that even in Brazil. So it would ask you, what's the fourth like, digit of your pin? 100%. It would just make up. It would be like, I need the fourth. Then it would be like, give me the seventh. Give me the first. And it would ask you four times. For like, And it was wild. And I was blown away. And I had had my card cloned like many times. In fact, I would only use it inside secure buildings that were secure like city banks. Yep. And it would be cloned by the time I went in. Not only was it cloned, it was being used. I was in Rio. It would be used in yeah. Sao Paulo yeah. at a gas station yeah. for an amount, by yeah. the way, higher than my limit for daily withdrawal. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. This was wild. Your pin is for children. You're like, you don't have the 16 <laughs> hexadecimal. <laughs> but yeah, they had it right, which is they had a multi challenge, right? It's like, duh, 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 duh. you have to. Well, that and, the, and no one vendor collects your whole pin. Exactly. Exactly. So that's the, so in, cool. each time you use a card and you put your pin in, you're basically exposing all of the credentials. So that yeah. one gets around to that problem. Right? We need to up our game on some of this stuff. It's not so much the credit card fraud thing. It's this other stuff. Like I, I was absolutely flabbergasted by the quantum of stupidity around for example, getting a car. So I was trying to lease a car for something and my credit score went down and I was like, wait, what the hell just happened? And they're like, oh, well, you went to four Porsche dealers yeah, and you have a rule that if you're within the 30 days and you know, the four Porsche dealers who obviously did not share yeah. and it shows up for Porsche, Delaware, Porsche, New Hampshire, Porsche, like, and I was like, you would think unless I'm trying to build a fleet of attack Porsches, right. maybe you could. But no, right. they, and then they told me, they said, oh, you can't challenge that directly. I was like, wait, what? You have to go to each and every dealer and tell yeah. them that you're no longer trying to buy the car from a year ago. And they have to give you a release letter. They get some letter and I said, and then what? Should I fax it to you? Fuck it. I'm done with the credit. Mm -hmm.